come November 18th, are we going to see less semis on the road and are less people going to have their CDL license? Make sure you stay tuned in this video to find out. All right, well, let's jump right into this. If you have a CDL permit or a CDL, you know all about the clearinghouse. The clearinghouse is a database that was created that keeps track of all drug tests and alcohol tests for CDL holders. And as of July 2024, there are currently 175,000 drivers that are in prohibited status in clearinghouse, meaning they are not eligible to operate a commercial motor vehicle under the clearinghouse rules and regulations. They failed a drug test or they failed an alcohol test or they might not have even shown up for one. Um, that can get your license and status at clearinghouse placed on uh, prohibited. Um, well, come November 18th of this year, the clearinghouse is moving from moving your status from prohibited and allowing states to just flat out get rid of your CDL. You will not have a CDL license. Um, and like I said, as of January, there is 175,000 CDL holders right now that are in the substance abuse program that is set up by the clearinghouse that have not completed it and are still showing a status of prohibited uh, when a company checks your status on clearinghouse, meaning they can't hire you because you cannot operate a commercial vehicle. How do you get off of that status? So if you are in clearinghouse under the prohibited status, how do you complete the return to duty process to get your status moved to not prohibited. I'll put a screenshot up right here and I'll also go through the steps as I have it open on my computer right now. And this is law 49 CFR part 40 subpar O, A, a summary below. So I'll read how you are able to get your status changed from prohibited to not prohibited. And remember, you only have until November 18th of this year, 2024, to get this complete. But also understand the FMCSA has allowed states to actively, right now, take away your CDL privileges and strip you of your CDL. So if you have failed a drug test, if you have failed an alcohol test, you need to do these steps as soon as possible. Um, it says select a substance abuse professional. Your employer is required to provide you a list of DOT qualified substance abuse professionals, acronym SAPS. You select your SAP based on your own experience. So your employer needs to give you a list, but you are able to get your own substance abuse professional yourself. Just make sure they are DOT qualified. Your designated SAP will evaluate you and provide you recommendations for education slash treatment. Your SAP will determine if you have successfully completed your education and or treatment, therefore making you eligible for your return to duty test. All right, you're ready to go take your test. Here's what has to happen. You must be sent by your employer only a DOT regulated employers and not the employee request the return to duty test. So make sure you understand that. You can't call a clinic and say, hey, I need to take a return to duty test. You need to be sent by an employer that is a DOT regulated employer. Um, it also says if you are an owner operator, your designated consortium slash third party administer must send you for the test. So somebody like me, I can't just go in and do it. My consortium or the third party or even the carrier that I'm leased onto has to set that return to duty drug test and alcohol test up for me. All right, we're, you're almost to the point where your status is gonna be changed from prohibited to not prohibited. Your status will be updated 
when your employer or like me, a third party entity or even the carrier that I'm leased onto enters a negative return to duty test result in clearinghouse. Once your clearinghouse status is not prohibited, you are eligible to resume performing safety sensitive functions, meaning you are allowed to drive a commercial vehicle. You are not out of the woods yet. All right, your status has changed to not prohibited and you're back at work driving an 18 wheeler down the road, but you are not out of the woodwork yet. To remain in a non-prohibited status, your employer must complete the follow-up testing plan with you as specified by the SAP, which must include a minimum of six unannounced follow-up tests in the first 12 months of returning to performing safety sensitive functions, which is having a CDL driving a commercial vehicle. If you are an owner operator, your designated consortium or third party must complete your follow-up testing plan. It is not something you can do as an individual. It has to be done, like I just read, by a third party or your employer. Well, the final paragraph of how to change your status from prohibited to non-prohibited is basically a five-year probation deal. It says information about your drug and alcohol program violation is retained in the clearinghouse for five years from the date of violation determination or until the successful completion of the follow-up testing plan, whichever is later. So it's going to be there for five years. Um, hopefully you found this video informational. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. I will put a link in the description below that brings you to all the information that I talked about on this video. And hopefully you pass all your drug and alcohol tests and never have to be in a position where you are prohibited from the clearinghouse and the FMCA FMCSA from being able to operate a commercial vehicle. Anyways, hope everybody has a good night. Till next time, you know what it is. Keep on trucking.